Thank you very much, Quick Shot. Smart answer, smart player, and smart play from the Unicorns of Love all around. But I gotta say, when I saw the picks and bans coming out, I was a little bit worried for the Unicorns of Love, especially giving up the Maokai and then not picking the Sejuani. What did you think, and how did it change throughout the uh, early and mid game? So I, I found the picks from Yorl a bit weird, but it worked out really well. Like they went for Graves Nunu, and they they didn't want to go to the late game against the double tank. And what they did is just they used their mid game power spike so well that uh, they could just win the game before the tanks had any chance to get any items. Like Nunu just running in the jungle all the time, warding everything. Like Sejuani is just looking at the Nunu running in the jungle, but what can he do? Because his mid laner is push at the inhibitor almost, like and can't do anything to help him. So they just got the vision, got the picks, got the dragons. But then with the Sejuani, who uh, a lot of people have said is the strongest pick if some of the Nidalee and the Rek'Sai are not on the Rift, was there anything that Airwax could have done? Maybe not mid, but maybe bottom, maybe top lane? I, I just don't think he played it very well. Like it's, of course, Sejuani is a way weaker jungle early game than anything else. And when the Nunu, he could just do whatever he wanted because his mid lane was getting completely destroyed. <laughs> so, uh, he just had wards everywhere in his jungle, so there was no point to gank even because they always knew where he was. What did you make of the skirmisher's uh, saber on the Nunu? I, I thought it was pretty smart because you don't really need the racers to farm well. And uh, stalkers is a bit pointless because you have the slow all the time anyway. So with the skirmisher you can shut down the ADC or whoever you want to go on a bit better. Yeah, and that's what they all did. They just ran into the comp. Let's actually run a replay of uh, somewhere in the mid game where the Unicorns of Love are pretty much ahead already, but this played this fight also correctly, Cyanide. Yeah, so CV is actually looking to uh, engage here, but the Sejuani ult is not really good. The slow is pointless here, and Kick is disengages for a bit. And now they're just waiting around all the cooldowns to get the opportunity to go back in. And here Youngbug pops his um, item to run fast in, but... Their follow-up is a bit late, and Hecarim gets a good flank on them. It's pretty much an equal fight here. <laughs> could have went way worse for either side. Yeah, it could have, but uh, Power of Evil doing work once again, and actually throughout the entire game. And the card says it was working a little bit in the beginning, getting first blood, but they just... They didn't allow the Copenhagen Wolves to scale up, and even then, with the Nunu and the Graves, it would have been hard uh, for them to finish it out, I think. Very good from the Unicorns of Love in general. Now, before we take a break, let's look to Twitter and touch base with you at home. Earlier, we asked, which champion do you want to see played by a pro on patch 5.5 and why? And here's what you guys think. The first one is from Ad Digital Fear, who writes, I want to see Nautilus played in the LCS. He brings so much CC and huge tanky stats to the game for diving towers. Would you play him? I would not play Nautilus, but I feel like he's kind of a worse Sejuani in a way that you still encounter the same problems, but the Sejuani skit is overall a bit stronger. Mm -hmm. The second one is from Danatech 89 Hoping the pros bring back the Troll Smash. Do we really need a reason to see the Trundle back? And in light of the changes, it could actually work. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Trundle. Like, why I think he might work a bit better right now is because if people are actually going to keep playing these tanks in the jungle, you can just ultimate them, steal the tanky stats, and then you're a tank yourself without actually having to build so much yeah. stats. Maybe we'll see that come out. Last one is from Ad Mattis, please. Bring out the Ramus, please. They see him rolling, they hate him. Okay. Yeah, Ramus as well. A huge buff with the Cinder Hulk item. You can actually farm the jungle now and you do don't touch, just have to AFK, so we might see him, but uh, I doubt it. <laughs> we will see, of course. I'm sure that OK did something to Twitch chat as well. Thank you for sending in those answers, and if you have anything else you'd like to add to the conversation, be sure to tweet it at LL Esports and use that hashtag LCS. Now, coming up next, Odo Wamne and H2K Gaming will look to beat Elements for their ninth straight win to tie the standing European LCS record. And while we're away, head over to lolesports.com slash tickets for more information on the 2015 Mid-Season Invitational in Tallahassee, Florida. Tournament will bring the top six League of Legends teams from around the world to the east coast of the United States to fight for regional pride when the action kicks off on May 7th throughout May 10th. Tickets are available online right now and we hope to see you there. The Copenhagen Wolves are looking to beat the Unicorns of Love for the second time this season. Here comes Airwalk's dodge by Power oh, of Evil Flash. Oh, the he's going to be in some trouble after he misses the flash. And in comes Vizachachi. They find Hillis saying the Timbers is down, but so is Hillis saying. Vizachachi coming in. Power of Evil picking up Youngbuck right off the bat. Airwalk is already down. Oh, I can flash. I'm coming. 
Kartus, Kartus, ja, Sivin, Kartus Sivin, 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 Sivin,